the yeah. NFC South, going through with Johnny to know to make some money on this bitch. So draft needs for these teams. Um, NFC South, an interesting one for sure. I think at this point, pretty clearly uh, divide in the top two teams and the bottom two teams in this division. Which, you know, I'll talk more about going into the season. The draft can change a lot for sure. But uh, definitely teams in really interesting positions here, like I said. So don't spend too much time here. Just a quick update on the picks all these teams have as of now. And uh, real quick, again, I want to stress in these videos, I think drafting for need is really, really bad in, in almost every scenario. Um, and especially in this division, there are examples of why drafting a bad player high just because they play a position – puts you in an even worse spot going forward. Um, but we'll get into that. Like I said, uh, just going to go right to the first team here, the Atlanta Falcons. So Atlanta Falcons, I mean, especially on offense, and, you know, this has been the story of them for forever, a team with a ton of talent on offense, and uh, kind of garbage came on defense. Now, I think they have a chance to be one of the top, those top two teams in this division that I was mentioning, uh, pretty clearly at this point being in their second of the Buccaneers. But uh, they do have some some holes for sure. So the first one, and really the first two here, you can kind of consider 1A, 1B, both really important things that they really don't have. Uh, the other things, which people mention a lot more, can be issues too. But the, the difference here is I think they don't even have anybody uh, for these top two, whereas the bottom ones – you can at least maybe piece it together. Uh, so, yeah, left guard uh, right now, I mean, you're talking about their offensive line. They have four starters pretty clearly. And Jake Matthews, Matt Hennessy, Chris Lindstrom, Keelan McGarry, all of whom I like to varying degrees. Uh, Hennessy probably being the least, but that's more of a, a unknown situation rather than uh, I dislike when he's playing. He just hasn't played a lot. Uh, but their other spot, I mean, there is literally nothing there. <laughs> um, they let go of James Carpenter. They lose Justin McCray. They lose any, anybody who has any experience there, and they don't bring anyone in. So I think that's maybe getting overlooked as a thing. But, I mean, literally, there, there's no one here. You're talking about John Wetzel, Willie Beavers. Matt Gano's a tackle. I mean, there's nobody here. So that's a huge thing, especially with Matt Ryan, a quarterback who requires good offensive lines, especially at this point in his career. But that's something they need to fix and they need to fix quickly. Uh, the other thing, edge rusher. Now here, the reason it's second is they at least have uh, a tiny bit. I mean, it's still basically nothing, but at least in Dante Fowler, he provides – uh, the element of speed rush, which is something not a lot of teams have. And while he's not great at it, he's better than a lot of guys. Not to be super useful as Falcons fan, I'm sure can attest. But other than him, again, you have nothing. Steven Means showed okay as a edge guy, um, especially as a run defending guy. Uh, Barkevius Mingo has done some okay things as an outside linebacker at times throughout his career, but uh, he's considered a pretty big draft bust for a reason. And Tuoti Mariner, Jacob Tuoti Mariner, Two EOT, I think, um, is bad. He's just bad. So you're, you're talking about basically nothing here, and especially nothing that matters. And, and pass rush is a thing that you require as a team in the NFL at this point. And while they do have a dominant player in Grady Jarrett, they have nothing else, and that's a really big need. Uh, so these other three, like I said, the secondary especially is something people talk about with the Falcons being a huge issue, and, and it is to a point. But what I want to say here and what I want to stress and the reason – this is maybe I think the reason coaching is more important in the NFL outside of games, maybe more so than in games, is that they have the people on the roster here to put out a defense that's not going to get burned constantly. However, I have almost zero faith in them actually doing that, which makes this an interesting need um, to talk about because you have AJ Terrell, who's good. You sign Fabian Moreau, who's good. And you have Dark Wes Denard, who's good. Uh, at least if, if they bring him back, I believe, pretty sure they resigned him. That's three players that if they're your starting secondary guys, you're actually going to be fine. Now, you're not going to be great or anything, don't get me wrong. But And even Bloody Ray Wilson as, as a reserve is another good, legitimately useful corner. The problem is they have some landmines here that they're probably going to put on the field, and it's going to kill them. Isaiah Oliver, really bad. Kendall Sheffield, really bad. They've put a lot of, throughout their early careers of both those guys. They put a lot on them. They've expected them to play a lot and give the production, which they haven't given to even the tiniest extent. So you really, that's what that's what creates this interesting situation. Now, they are missing top end talent, like I said, outside of AJ Terrell, who I actually believe could be a number one corner. But they need – to play the right players, and if they're not going to, then they need to draft players who they believe in who they will play. Like I said, we'll see if that happens, but whatever. Uh, safety, 
they're um, maybe you could argue this should be higher even uh, because they do kind of like starting talent. Safety is just not as important as the rest of the things, but you have, I mean, a strong safety of nothing, right? You have Jalen Hawkins who actually played a little bit early in the year last year as a fourth, fifth, sixth round rookie. Um, and he wasn't awful. I will say I wasn't super impressed or anything. I don't like believe in him as a long-term starter or anything, but I don't think he's terrible. Uh, and on the other end, just today, actually, they signed Deron Harmon, who he at least can function as a free safety. I don't necessarily like him either, but uh, that, that does alleviate this need a tiny bit. But that's only, again, if they play those two, they also signed Eric Harris from the Raiders for some reason, who's one of the absolute worst safeties in football. I, I don't understand that one, but you know, there you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they have players on this roster, like I said, who can play. And even this next position, another example of that, nose tackle. Uh, they have DeAdrian Smet on roster, who's at least functional in that role, but they play Tyler Davison 80% of snaps, and he's hor- like just horrible, horrible. He gets blown off the ball every play. So what are they going to do there? We'll see. This team has the defensive talent to not suck to the worst, like worst in the league level. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. But either way, um, some needs on this roster, but they, they have a lot of talent here for sure. All right, and then we have the Panthers. Um, you see at the top quarterback, uh, that's going to tell you something pretty clearly here. And that is that I have no problem, literally no problem saying Sam Darnold is not going to be the starting quarterback in any meaningful level for them. Um, he, I was like, he's not better than Teddy Bridgewater even. And, uh, Panthers fans, I was apparently, I mean, they, they were kind of turned on Teddy Bridgewater a lot, but Teddy Bridgewater was not that bad last year. He was playing with a horrible, horrible defense who hurt him a lot. And frankly, his offensive weapons get overrated. Now, they aren't horrible, and don't get me wrong, I don't think Dave Bridgewater is some elite guy or even all that good. I just – he's not bad. Um, and you're going to see that Darnold's worse. Now, with the things that they've done in the offseason, you know, he, he might even get worse for him than that. Uh, basically, the point is they don't have someone on the quarterback, uh, someone in the quarterback room who's going to provide meaningfully good quarterback play at any point in their careers, and I have no problem saying that. Um, so they need one. Um Second corner. So this is when I talked about how drafting a player high at a position, just because he's at the position, not because he's good, creates a, a chain effect of playing that player more than they deserve. And then you get worse and worse because of it. And there's two examples here. The first one being corner Dante Jackson, really, really bad player. Um, but because he's a second round pick, and because he had some flashes as a rookie, the Panthers insist he's the number one corner, clearly from their moves, from their roster moves, which is incorrect. And then the other one being Shaq Thompson, I'll talk about in the linebackers, who's a very similar story. But, yeah, at corner, I mean, I get they signed A.J. Boye and Rashawn Melvin. Uh, A.J. Boye at least can function a little bit. Uh, he's he's not at this point any level of shutdown player. He never really was. Uh, he fit really, really well as a corner two in Jacksonville in 2017. And he, he is some other guy. I don't think he's bad. I just, at, at this age, he's one of the players I think he's clearly on the decline. Didn't really look great as Bronco. And he's not a corner. He's, he reminds me a lot of Darius Slay. He just doesn't actually rise to the level of, of mitigating the dangers of a number one receiver on the other team, which if you're looking at him as number one corner, becomes a big issue. Now, like I said, they do worse than that somehow. They find out to Jackson, but whatever. Uh, they also have no one to play the slot. Troy Pride was uh, one of the worst corners in the NFL pretty comfortably when he did play. Uh, Corn Elder ended up taking the vast majority of steps. He moved on in free agency. And uh, the point is <laughs> they have maybe a half of a good corner on the roster in A.J. Boye. And their primary weakness last year, the main reason they sucked so bad on defense, is right back and maybe even worse because they let Rasul Douglas go, who, again, wasn't great, but he's at least something. They really, really need corner help here. Um, next one, guard. Similar story. I mean, you have basically half of a good player. And right now that player is not even projected to be one of the starters. I mean, you sign Pat Elfline for some reason, who's ungodly bad. Uh, you retain John Miller over Chris Reed, the other starting guard from last year, which again, doesn't, just doesn't make sense. John Miller wasn't, you know, he wasn't quite the disaster that like Elfline is, but he wasn't good. And um, the only, like I said, the half player that I think might even be okay is Dennis Daly, who's drafted to be a tackle as a backup, and he was hurt for a lot of last year. But when he was a rookie year before, actually showed pretty well. Even last year when he played, I think he could play guard at at least a mediocre level. But regardless, <laughs> that's not something that inspires competence as far as the position group goes. So they really need help there, really, really need help there. Um, free safety, this one, of all the ones that we've gotten to so far, um, and, and even all the ones 
this point down. It's potential they have the guy on roster who can do some stuff. Hence why they're not at the top of this list. But uh, they do need help, and really all these spots are missing the high end talent. So um, yeah, free safety. Like I said, that player they might have in Kenny Robinson, a uh, player drafted out of the XFL last year, played at West Virginia. He doesn't. He did get on the field a little bit towards the end of the year. wasn't super impressive to me, but also wasn't horrible. And anytime a rookie's in that situation, I'm just going to assume I don't have enough snaps to make a declaration about him. But uh, Kenny Robinson, you know, what are you what are you getting there? We'll see. I don't necessarily believe it just because uh, math says as a whatever fourth round pick, he's probably not going to be a, a long term starter. But you never know. But uh, don't really have anyone there. And their other safety spot I'll mention here, too, is kind of bad. Justin Burris is not good, but um, he's at least a marginal NFL starter as opposed to what's of these other positions um, going forward. So, yeah, linebacker is maybe the one that I'm going to get the most pushback about here um, because of almost defensive rookie of the year, Jeremy Chen, or maybe he won it. I don't remember, but um, some things about this linebacker room. One, like I said, they employ Shaq Thompson, who especially as a middle linebacker is really, really, really bad. He consistently misses run fits. He's not good in coverage despite his athleticism. And he just, as a player who they put on the field 100% of snaps, hurts them almost 100% of snaps compared to other actually good linebackers in the NFL. So you start with that, right? Then you get Jeremy Chin, who uh, is wildly at this point, that that sounds that sounds harsh. I don't hate Jeremy Chen, but it is overrated as an actual impactful defender. Now he does have some flash plays, but if you look at what they were, a lot of times they were like fumble recoveries or tipped interception, like things that I uh, I would never credit to that player outside of like okay he was around the ball, which is not a bad thing for sure. I'd rather have him than Shaq Thompson, for example. But uh, assuming that he's going to be this dominant force, consistently stopping plays around the field, is uh, it's a step too far for me at this point. Now it's possible. I'm, I'm not going to roast him too much. He was a rookie, uh, but just people need to chill on assuming they have you know a defensive player of the year guy going forward there because that's just not the case. Um, probably not the case. And past that, it's, I mean, he signed Denzel Perriman, who is a linebacker who can at least do okay in between the tackles as a run defender, but uh, that is not a super valuable skill set, as most people, I think, kind of realize by now, especially as a, as a linebacker in the modern NFL. Um, but it's horrible in coverage. And they have guys like Jermaine Carter, Darius Taylor. <laughs> they signed Frankie Louvu from the Jets. I mean, none of those guys matter at all. They shouldn't be on the field, is, is the point if you're trying to be successful on defense. So, that's my explanation for the linebacker. That mainly hinges on my opinion of Shaq Thompson. If yours is different, you know, I would definitely say you're wrong, but whatever. Um, next one, left tackle. This is another one that I think Panthers fans think is higher. Uh, they have at least here someone on roster who I, I would be okay starting for the course of these year, which is, is Trent Scott. I don't love him, but I actually think um, if he's your worst player on your offensive line, you're not doing all that bad, and he's not the worst here, which is, is an issue, but – he at least can actually function as a left tackle without torpedoing your offense from the snap. So, you know, that's that. But they do need someone going forward. And I'll mention here, just want to throw in Taylor Moten, who's great. I right tackle. I like whenever I can talk positive about him, I will. Um, the other thing, last thing, and this one much less than the rest of the things on this list, is they are missing three technique uh, uh, defensive tackle. Have Derek Brown, really good, nose tackle. Um but other than him, I mean, just defensive tackle in general. Sam Morgan Fox, who I do like, actually, and I think it's going to be a positive presence for them. Uh, but he's not like a game changer, right? He's not someone I you want playing a ton of snaps. And outside of him, they just nothing. Bravion Roy is really bad. He more of a back and nose tackle should be than a three technique guy, but shouldn't be on the field either way. <laughs> um, the only one on roster, maybe they signed Frank Heron out of Detroit. who's kind of a defensive end three technique hybrid who did do a couple things last year, but I mean, then he's no, yeah, I'm not expecting anything real from him. So you're in a position there where you have, you know, one okay starter and then nothing else. So Panthers, a lot of needs. They're going to be bad again this year for sure. But, uh, you know, I at least met like Matt rule and I think they're moving in a positive direction and it's a lot less needs than I would have said they had last year. So, <laughs> so uh, get ready Saints fans. Cause, uh, Y'all got a whole lot of issues on this roster going forward. Uh, for the second team in a row, you'll see at the top, quarterback. Uh, again, James Winston, actually pretty similar to Sam Darnold. Um, a player I have no issue saying will not perform at a high level as a quarterback in terms of winning football. Um, 
you know, you saw what, what happens when you let him play his offense in Tampa Bay. It results in a still below 500 team with a ton of yards and a ton of interceptions. And, and that's just who he is. Um, it's not Bruce Arians offense. It's not, that's who James Winston is. Uh, legitimately not a good quarterback who was put in environments that provide production. I, I don't think whatever. That's that's the whole thing about that. Also, Taysom Hill, uh, nowhere near level of thrower required to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. So you really need a quarterback there. I don't know how they're going to get one or their pick. That's going to be tough. Uh, I will say, real quick, before I move on, a positive about the Saints, I do think Sean Payton is a good coach, whatever you want to say about him as a person. And, and I do think that raises their floor a little bit. But listen, this roster is not great at this point, especially on the defensive side. So that raises me number two, linebacker. <laughs> um, some of the other positions we talk about on other teams, you have one player, right? You have Demario Davis, who at this point is like 33 or 34. I mean, he, he's older. And I even he is not super elite because of his um, inability in pass coverage, which is an issue. I mean, y- you're, you're just not in a good spot. Other than him, I mean, you're looking at Zach Bond, who's a third-round pick last year, who's barely even an off-ball linebacker, uh, more of an edge player in college and didn't show anything when he was on the field for not a ton of snaps, but that made me – uh, have a positive outlook about him at all. You have Caden Ellis, who started the first game last year, was bad, never played again. <laughs> you have uh, Chase Hansen, I am barely played. Like, it, there's just nothing here, right? And it's, while well, linebacker, not a crazy important position, it's still, if, if you are on the field, if you're one of the 11 players on the field, people kind of overestimate outside of running back, overestimate how bad it is to have a bad player at that spot. And that's what the Saints are facing here. Uh, strong safety, too. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins at this point, point as a coverage player is such a disaster that he brings down the rest of the defense. I do think he's a legitimate run support player. I think his career has been really good. There's been times when he was younger, he was a much better coverage player. But at this point, um, literally, he loses to he loses to any tight end in the NFL, effectively, in coverage over any number of snaps, which is it's not good. You, you can't really function with him as a starting safety at this point, the way the NFL attacks matchups. Um so that's a pressing need outside corner. I mean, you have Marshawn Lattimore who's good, but then again, like nothing. Patrick Robinson has played okay a few times throughout his career. I don't really like him too much. Uh, he's also older, injury prone, and past him, uh, what Keith Washington, Ken Crawley, uh, notable disaster, Ken Crawley, uh, one of the three worst corners in the NFL. PJ Williams. I mean, there's nothing there. At least you have a slot corner again. Uh, CJ Gardner Johnson is good, but. Uh, you really, 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 really need outside help on the Saints really badly. Uh, tight ends. This is more of an unproven thing. Maybe Adam Troutman's a guy. I, I don't have a ton of faith, although I will say he, he was did some things I liked last year in his few snaps. But um, past him, I mean, you give Nick Vanette a three-year contract, a guy who barely belongs on the NFL field. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're tough there. Uh, Edge, this is a depth thing. Cameron Jordan's still really good. Um but Marcus Davenport, while I do think of all the project defensive ends from the last couple of years, he has the best chance to become a real player. Uh, he's still not there yet. And if you're leaning on him as like a full-time edge guy, that's not good. And if his rotation with, with recently signed Tano Passino, Curtis, or, uh, Carl Granderson, that's also really not good. You'll, you'll be fine run defense, run defense-wise. But uh, you're really missing pass rush. And even Cam Jordan doesn't provide a high-end pass rush at this point either. So – that's an issue. <laughs> um, no tackle. I mean, you don't even have one on the roster. No, that's you know that's barely a thing I care about most of the time. As long as you have someone that doesn't completely suck there, uh, you're going to be okay. Uh, if you don't, though, you get what happened to the Falcons and Cowboys last year, which is not good. But here, yeah, nothing. David Onyemata, Shai Tuttle, Malcolm Roach, three defensive linemen I like. None of them you want as your dedicated run stopper. So that's a big one. And then this last one, this one is way, way, way below <laughs> the other needs on this on this roster. But uh, I will say, as far as rotational receivers, you are missing a little bit. Um, your top three I actually like a lot. Mike Thomas, obviously, Michael Thomas. Uh Deontay Harris is really, really good, even as a receiver, not just as a kick returner. They really found something in him. And Traquan Smith, I, I think, is just fine uh, as a receiver. And not as in, not just fine as a rose, but as in, like, a positive. Like, you, you can function with him. But past that, I mean, Marcus Callaway does some nice things as a basically tight end. <laughs> um, but that's it, right? So you are going to need receivers going forward there, too. But, uh, yeah, Saints, I mean, listen, you have a really good offensive line. And you have Michael Thomas, which creates a little bit of a floor. But the rest of this team is 
is really, really, really in a tough spot, and they don't exactly have a ton of picks uh, to fix that. So, yeah, not not great. And last, but uh, very obviously not least, <laughs> yeah, the Bucks. So this one, this page, th- this discussion is going to be so much different than every basically every other team in the NFL. Um, it's it's just it's really interesting, I think. But this is probably going to be the only time you're ever going to see me put running back here because. Frankly, all these outside of the first one are basically just reaching because I have to put stuff on here because I'm not going to say a team doesn't need team uh, doesn't have needs. And I want to point this out too. This this screen right, these needs are not an excuse for them to haul off and do dumb stuff in the draft, right? Because that's how you create what the Saints have in terms of a bunch of needs in a year or two. And uh, obviously, that's the way the Buccaneers are going. But right now, they do have the Super Bowl winner. You know, they have a great team. Um, but yeah, the first one is really important for them. They need especially tackle depth. Uh, Donovan Smith, Tristan Wurst, both really good. I like both of them a lot. After that, they have, like, almost nothing. Josh Wells has played mediocre a couple times in his career, but that's not – you don't want that. Um, and even on the interior, you know, Ali Marpet is the lead guy. But other than him, I liked Aaron Sinney and what he did, but that was two games. Granted, it was a playoffs, but, you know, we'll see. And uh, Alec Cap is bad. but And I, I don't know who's going to be the starter next year. That That, that is the one spot. Um, tackle especially, but just overall, that they do need to protect themselves with some offensive linemen, which I think they're smart enough to do. We'll see, though. Um, corner depth, kind of a similar situation. They bring back Ross Cockrell just in the last couple of days, which I, I like a lot. Um, don't love him as a player, but as far as a fourth corner, you're actually, I mean, you're doing pretty good with him. Um, but you're, you're in a similar situation where if you run into corner injuries, you're going to get a lot worse luck quick. Now, obviously, a lot of teams in that position, but Buccaneers in the positive situation where they can actually address that, although hard to find good rookie corners. We'll see. But um, safety, <laughs> this one, uh, again, this is just a huge, you know, I'm just reaching for stuff at this point. Um, I don't love Antoine Winfield. Um, I don't think he's on the same level as even like Marcus Williams in this division or some other guys. He, because of his name, because of how he played the first couple of weeks last year against quarterbacks who didn't throw the ball more than a yard downfield. Gets uh, gets put up there in some conversations he should not be in yet, but I d- definitely don't think he's bad, and and he can develop into that guy. Whatever, I'm not trying to roast Antonio Winfield. That's not the point. Point is that uh, him, Jordan White, and Mike Edwards. If there's anywhere that you could upgrade a little bit, maybe uh, this is probably the easiest spot. Not that it's easy; they're still really good here too. And the last one, <laughs> running back. Uh, that's not even necessarily a thing at this point because they signed Gio Bernard, who instantly becomes the best running back on this roster. But uh, between him and Ronald Jones, again, I mean, you're more than fine as far as running an NFL offense, but that's the one spot that you could get better at pretty easily, pretty quickly. Not that it's necessary, but you could, and especially if they're going to get snaps to Leonard Fournette, which, no offense, listen, I have Leonard two Leonard Fournette jerseys, but uh, he's bad as an NFL running back, just bad. But whatever, don't arrest him too much. Uh, you're talking about a team that, like I said, this 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 panel, this this slide is going to look way different than the other teams as we go through the NFL here. But uh, yeah, NFC South, uh, like all the divisions at this point, you know, really interesting going to the draft.